speaker for Simbox down at the Macron Stadium for the Kieran Farrell promotion uh, the fact before Christmas and I'm joined by his brother Nathan Farrell, how you doing Nathan? I'm good Luke, you okay? Yeah I'm all good, cheers mate. So um, as we were saying off camera there, you know, we've not spoke since um, you fight on the, the big matchroom card yeah, in Manchester, um, so can we go back to them to begin with, um, your thoughts on the win? Yeah, well um, obviously I had a late replacement, I came in at 10 stone 2, he came in at 10 stone 8 and, and he regular boxes at well off to super well off, so I knew he was going to be strong but well, I say I thought I knew he was going to be strong. I thought he was actually going to stand and because he was bigger than me, shorter but a lot stockier. He was quite, he was a quite a big dude in, in that respect. I weren't sure what to expect, so I was a little bit uh, irritable in the, you know, in the, in the public workout, the weigh-in especially. Don't get me wrong, when I seen him at the weigh-in, I thought, wow, you are very short. I thought he'd be, be a bit taller, but he was, he was very short. But like you say, he was very, very stocky. He was a big guy. Um, but when we got in there, I just, it's weird, because before the fights, I, I go quiet and focus. And I think, right, you need to be on point. You need to, you know, be calculated. I don't like being rash. I don't like, you know, I'm not a scrapper. I like good technique mm -hmm. or maybe not a textbook, because I have my hands down and I, I just like to evade shots, pick my shots, and uh, I always have a bit of a word with myself before going out, and, and just tell myself, just do do you. And um, I was expecting to get a lot more counter punches off, but as soon as, again, as soon as he felt my power, or felt whatever, around the back of the ear, or, or what have you, I hit him with a left up around the back of the ear, and he complained. Um, I felt my knuckles knuckling, and he was, I think he, he was already, he already had it in his mind that he was going to get on his bike. He could tell from the, from the first bell, really. Um, it was more of chasing him round the ring, but like I say, some people, when someone's running, they actually chase him. Can't be asked chasing him, you know what I mean? So I just, I just walk round. I cut the ring off, but walk. I like get a bit of a breather back, and we'll, 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 we'll continue. And it's like first gear sort of stuff. And it was the old four rounds of first gear type of stuff. He was trying to annoy me doing his little alley shuffle so I'd come flying in so he could tie me up but when he did that I just did it back to him and he got annoyed so I got out of the way of his shots and I um, had a bit of a laugh with Kieran in between well in rounds while the round was going on and uh, now nah, it was a bit of a dream come come true really to, to, to fight in there but it was it was like fighting in my back garden mm. didn't like it's weird Luke uh, like I won't say I get nervous, but I do have a. I'm an overthinker naturally, so in the, in a few in the lead up to the fight, I overthink it a million times. But once I get in there, it's like it could be in a in the gym, having a mess about, or in the living room, having a, having a pillow fight, uh, whatever. That's how it feels like when I'm in there. It's no big deal to me. Fantastic, you know. So obviously you're, on, you're having your ring walk and you're, you're in the changing rooms, about to make the ring walk. And um, you're, you're, you say the Manchester Arena, you're on such a big undercard uh, for a local Manchester legend, if you like, an anti-crawler. Yeah. Um, coming back from what you've come back from, you know, yeah. the, the injuries, the depression, everything else. You know, you must be really proud of yourself. And yeah. it's only the beginning. Yeah, and you know what, mate? I keep I keep wondering why I'm getting in there without giving it, giving a bit, giving a shit really. It's like once I get in there, I'm like, fuck it. I've not always been like that, mm -hmm. but these days I'm like that. I'm just like, fuck it, it is what it is. It'll be what it'll be, and it's no big deal. I just tell myself nothing's ever a big deal anymore. And I think that's because of the depression, uh, life slowing me down with my injury. Uh, I think all, all that has made conditions, although physically not ideal, uh, spiritually and mentally perfect, really, because when I'm in there, I'm like, Fuck it, you know it's yeah. uh, it's a nice feeling. So um, yeah, no, I was proud. Obviously, it was good to get in there just in time for Anthony Crawler's last ever fight. Uh, that that's goes ties in nicely with the story of Kieran Crawler, yeah. myself. Um, you know, there's a bit it, funny enough. I never said this, but I'll get it in now. Um, Anthony Crawler's book. Uh, it said whatever happened to Kieran Farrell's brother, and I read it once when I was depressed. That this is not the reason why I came back. Mm -hmm. I came back for a million reasons. But I was sat there one day, didn't have a penny to my name. I had a big, big, massive ginger beard. I was over, badly overweight, couldn't walk. And I read this book that he gave Kieran a copy, you know, to read. And then Kieran passed it on to me. 
and I sat there reading it with a cup of tea and I, I read this bit, whatever happened to Kieran Farrell's brother. And I read it and I thought, what, what happened to Kieran Farrell's brother? Like, who, who's writing this? You know, like, like no, no, I'm not having a go at anyone, but I read it, I read it. Yeah. Like, I read, I'm sat in the, in the kitchen with a cup of tea. My life was at a standstill for a good few years. And I read this thing, I'm like, what? Was it expected? Like, Kieran mentioned, you get a shout in the book, or did you just no, read it and uh, not expect no, anything? Uh, no, I, I basically, Kieran gave me the book. He said, I've, it's quite good, Nate. Uh, and I said, you've not read all that. You've only read the bit about yourself. And, and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, he said, have a read. I went, sound, because I'm only going to read that bit anyway. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I, re- I went straight to the Kieran Farrell bit to obviously read uh, what he was, what he said about that whole uh, thing. And I just, I didn't know that it said what happened to his brother, because he said, uh, on the night it was very hostile and Kieran's brother was doing the, the, the slice I don't know what I was walking past him I'm trying just trying to get him you know a bit nervous for the fight so I kept walking past him going like that to him but um, obviously I didn't you know didn't mean anything by it but I was just trying to get him nervous obviously because he knew Kieran was coming hard that night and I just kept walking past him having a look at him and stuff like that so I read that bit but then it said what what, what happened to his brother and I was like you know and he just basically said um, See, at the time, I'd not really spoken in depth with Anne since Kieran's fight, and in the book it says uh, Nathan's been very standoffish in recent years, and it's true, but he must have thought it was me being standoffish to him, right. just because I was depressed. You ask anyone, I was standoffish to everyone. You couldn't get a conversation out of me. So anytime he said hi to me, I just went, hi, mate. And he you must have thought, I, I yeah. thought, you know, mm. you, 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 you made my, yeah. my brother end, career end or something like yeah. that, but it wasn't the case. Which is unfortunate. But uh, to be honest, so I think, with me coming out of my depression and being more open with everyone and being very like easy going a lot more than when I was depressed, I think he's he realised fucking hell this is a different kid. And I think with me actually coming back fighting, I think everyone's realised, well, is it definitely a different kid? Yeah. Because there was no chance I was ever fighting again. Was the um, was there ever a point when you spoke to Anthony about this? You know, did you ever clear the air or such? Did you ever think no, no, you clear it? no. Uh, it, I don't think it, I don't think it's needed because of the way I have acted towards him in, in, in like recent months, say twelve months. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I've never been, you know, the wrong way towards him, but I've never been. No, oh, I doing I'm because he gets about a million handshakes anyway. So I'm like, you don't need me fucking shaking his hand. Basically, that's just my the way I think. My I'm leave, leave leave the guy alone sort of thing. But he probably thought, you okay, know, Nathan's never shut me hand. Yeah. But it's not like that. You know, it's the way he, things get yeah. translation. And it? I knew, to be honest with you. But when you sort of like depressed, you, you know what's going on, but you don't bother uh, correcting it. Mm-hmm. You're like, whatever. So I knew me not shaking his hand or or letting on would make him think I've got something against him. I I was well aware of that, but I thought, okay, whatever. You know, oh, that's, yeah, you know, okay. like, I'll just crack on anyway. Yeah. So you don't, you don't bother, things like that, you don't bother, like, you know, clearing the air up mm-hmm. and stuff like that in any situation in life. I suppose at that point when you've got, you know, those kind of demons and those kind of issues going on, that's minuscule, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, out, yeah, out of yeah, sight, yeah, you know. You don't care, yeah. like, literally, I wouldn't, I didn't, at the time, I didn't care whether he thought I liked him or not. Yeah. It, my, my biggest issue was I'm depressed. And I'm, I, my life's really not great at the moment, mm-hmm. but um, thankfully though, I've, I've been able to, to come out of all that. And, and, and so that that Manchester Arena thing was the was the like not the, not the beginning of a new chapter. It was like the final. It was like a line draw. It, yeah, it was like but it was like sort of like like a get together mm. from 2012 in a weird way, oh, right, okay. like a reunion of yeah. that horrific night. But yet we've all come out of it great. He's happy, Kieran's happy, I'm happy, and, and for the first time in years, we're all in the same room together, happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, say the press conference before that 2012 fight was the last time we was all happy, raring to go, and then it's been seven years, and then until we've ended up in Manchester Arena all together, we, we've not had that. We've not been in the same room where we were all on the same level. So it, I felt. Like it was nourishing. I, I I always say it's nourishing to my soul. It, I, it made me feel really good about everything. Just just feel good about everything, um, especially you know, and knowing that 
like I said, I, I said it in a, I thought now was the best time to say me and my family are proud of you in that press conference. And so I thought I'm having I'm having this. I'm going to tell him now, and I, I meant it. Everyone knows me, knows I wouldn't say something I, I don't mean. It was a perfect time, and just like it's just crazy how it how I ended up sat on that seat with Nathan Farrell on a name tag like at a match room press conference. If you'd have looked, looked at me 18 months ago, it, it, it wouldn't have happened. And for me to turn round to him and say, I'm proud of you, it was just nice, weren't it? Everyone give it a clap and stuff like that. And uh, nah, it was perfect. Nice one. So obviously, you know, you got the win. Um, we move on from that. Um, what's the plans going forward for Nathan Farrell? Well, um, I just want... Uh, more of the same as of last year, really. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't bargain for um, fighting on match room two match room cards out of three. Like, I think I, I will fight on Kieran's one or two of Kieran's shows this year. I hope because Bet when sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> my head's already in this year. Yeah. Ne next year, yeah, yeah. but uh, but yeah, looking forward next year um, after the new year. Um, I've had a little. Um, since my fight, I've had a little niggle in my, in my shoulder, but it's more of a little niggle, and it's uh, been bugging me for weeks, and um, I've been hoping it goes, but it's still troubling me a little bit, so in terms of what date, I, I really don't know uh, when, when my first fight of 2020 will be, um, but I'm, I'm guessing Kieran will have loads of shows on anyway, so I'll be able to maybe pick shows as I go. You never know, I might end up on a matchroom show again. Nothing's really been finalised or I've just literally the last few weeks I've been well eating a lot of food gambling uh, winning money losing money and chilling out really and I, I've really not spe I've always, it always it's in the back of your mind like I can't wait to go next year and um, but we'll just see see what happens really but um, I think we need to get this um, 2019 out of the way Definitely. I mean, looking back, then one of one of the first interviews that I done uh, with yourself, I think it was just after your first fight um, on the August card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and back then, you was being optimistic and saying, if I'm get to the end of the year, uh, be fit and healthy, and have a have a three 0 record. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And now we're looking at it as if like that's, you know, something that's not irrelevant as such, but you know, you've achieved what you set out for back then. That was yeah, yeah. the goal. Yeah, you know, and you've gone out and yeah. achieved it. Yeah, and, and to be honest, um, I prob I'll probably just say more of the same three and all was perfect three fights in three months because I, I had a couple of shows cancelled earlier on yeah. in that year yeah. but i believe in like i maybe wasn't even ready you know in, in my oh, fitness yeah. you know when looking back because i was going to fight my debut at 11 stone I ended up fighting my debut at 10 stone too right so, so don't get me wrong luke i was more than confident of i did some sparring and stuff and thought yeah i'll be sound at 11 stone probably would have been or would have fought a foreigner who came to get his get his money, but you just never know. You might get clocked off one of them. You just don't know. I can take a punch. So I wasn't really my. I just wanted to get out. It was March. It was pretty much uh, yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah, 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 March last last year. I really wanted to get that done. I thought if it doesn't happen now, it's not happening. But thankfully, uh, Kieran taught taught me back round because when that got cancelled and then Manchester Arena got cancelled, I was like, it's not meant to be this case. It's been too long. It's been, I, I've not fought for that many years. Um, right. How you doing, mate? Yeah. Sometimes good, good. Get your head on the camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'd, I'd, I'd be honest with you, Luke, when uh, Manchester Arena got cancelled, after March got cancelled, I said to Kears, it's not happening, Kears, don't worry about it, it's alright, I'm, I'm fine with it, I'm not going to fight again, basically. Yeah. And Kears said, get your fucking ass in the gym, sort of thing. Uh, just have, have faith, like, and then free and all in three months, and just basically we'll see what two, uh, 2020 brings now, really. Yeah, fantastic. All the best for 2020. You know, congratulations on a great year in 2019. Thanks for your time this year as well. And I'm sure we'll catch up again. Cheers, soon, mate. mate. Uh, happy Christmas and happy new year yeah, as well, all mate. All the best, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.